to the two hour to and fro work on a daily basis, getting into the daily grind of getting on that 400 series highway, getting into Toronto and coming home on, on a daily basis. So like many people, I've noticed my car has been sitting in the driveway. I've been saving a lot on gas. And I question, like a lot of people, why we're seeing a little bit of an increase when it comes to our car insurance uh, policies. Uh, policyholders have started to receive renewals that are marginally higher than last year. And when you take into consideration the fact that we're not driving as much or uh, insurance claims are well down because we're not having the same amount of accidents out on the roads that we see in a normal basis, you have to shake your head. We'd like to welcome onto the show Nanish Kotak, who's a lawyer and founder of Kotak Law. Welcome to the program, Nanish. It's always good to have you on. Likewise. It's great to be on. So I don't know about your insurance provider, but um, many people are saying that they're seeing their rates increasing now this year. Um, how are they justifying this? You're right. Uh, absolutely, uh, Kelly. In, in fact, the rates are, are not just increasing marginally. Uh, many people are being asked to pay back a portion of any rebate that they got uh, together with uh, face an increase. Look, the reality is, and we look at the FISRA website, the Financial Services Regulatory Authority of Ontario, and they promote that insurance companies have given a billion dollars in rebate. But hidden in the fine print in their website is also that from December of 2019 until June of 2020, right through the pandemic, premiums across the province have gone up by $198 million. That's even with the alleged rebates. And if we look at the, the three years before that, so from really 2017 to the end of 2019, Ontario uh, drivers saw a 20% increase in their insurance uh, premiums. Um, in the approvals, if you go on the Fisher website, you'll see the approvals that will take place um, with the renewals this year going into early next year. Some of the companies are getting over 10% or 11% approvals for their increases. And this is despite uh, not just there's less cars on the road, but there are less accidents. You know, we've got stats from the Ministry of Transportation that are showing, for example, in April of 2020, there were 4,812 claims. That is property damage, personal injury, or fatality. The same time last year, April 2019, there were 14,166. On the average, you're seeing a good 60 to 70% reduction in actual claims. But the flip side, we're seeing an increase in insurance premiums um, at to, to historically high levels. And, you know, one, one could ask the question why, but there's really a lack of transparency in the way FISRA approves uh, auto rate increases um, and then goes ahead and sort of promotes this billion dollar rebate um, rather than, um, you know, questioning why these rates are actually being requested when we know insurance profits in the auto sector are in fact going up. So is the Financial Services Regulatory Authority of Ontario, as you call them, FISRA, are they a government um, arm? Of, like, are they a government uh, group? Right. So they are to be arm's length from the government. They report okay. to the Minister of Finance. They replace what was formerly known as FISCO. Uh, so it's relatively new that they've taken over this role. Um, but, you know, their mandate is, in fact, very, uh, very important. Their mandate is to promote good administration of insurance and pension plans, and promote transparency and disclosure of information. I'm not sure if we're seeing that. Uh, you know, the proof really is in the pudding. Are we actually seeing that the mandate being followed? Um, let's, let's look at this. You know, the reality is an insur auto insurance policy is like a tax. We, in fact, have to have it. You know, we have to pay taxes. We have to have auto, in auto insurance policies. So why is it this industry is, you know, they should make a profit. Every business should make a profit. But why is it this industry where we have to have their product repeatedly, repeatedly is, is being allowed to increase our premiums throughout Ontario and, and increase it, it, its profits? There was a study done by Dr. Fred Lazar um, of, the, uh, of York University Schulich School of Business. And he put out this study, in fact, in early 2020. I believe it came out in January. And he says Ontario residents have overpaid $5.6 billion in premium since 2011 and that insurance company profits have soared over 20% from 2017. He even goes further to say that the profits from Ontario in, uh, auto insurance um, premiums, in fact, help finance the, the entire casualty line for insurance companies throughout the country. 
And even the Insurance Bureau of Canada uh, acknowledges that per capita, our accident rate in Ontario is the lowest. Now that's per capita. Sure, we have more people. But still, why are we paying the most premiums in, in the country and why are insurance companies allowed to do this? It's a real question. Lack of transparency. Yeah, you brought up the fact that this report came out in January, and I want to speak to the timing of uh, some of the uh, reimbursements we, we received, uh, some right. discounts and, and premium deferrals that we received in the springtime. Did that have anything to do with, you know, maybe the optics of, of the insurance company, maybe softening things to the people that are their clients? Well, there's, the optics looked bad at the beginning, and we saw the Minister of Finance, and we saw the Premier hoping and, and saying that they need to do their part. But let's look at this. I'll give you an example for myself, and I, and I know others are in the same situation. You're, we're told, okay, we will give you a rebate or reduction in your premium, a good reduction, if you park your car at home. Okay, so if I, don't, if I park my car at home and don't drive it, then I keep theft and, and fire on, on, on the policy. But I or anybody else could have done that anyway pre-pandemic. So what's so special about, about being told, well, park your car and we'll give you a discount? So that's what I have personally got offered. I know others who have been offered. Now, I know there are some who may have got a rebate, many people who didn't. But I also know of people who have been asked to pay part of the rebate back. Um, you know, later on in the year, oh, sorry, we gave you too much. This should not be allowed. I mean, at a certain point in time, you know, it, enough is enough, Right. So, what, I mean, presumably there's a lot of insurers out there. Are, are we to shop around? Could that help uh, with, you know, uh, giving, sending a message to insurance providers? What, 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 yeah. what recourse do we have? Yeah, absolutely. I think shopping around is important uh, because there are a number of insurers. But just remember, when you shop around, doesn't, you know, the cheapest price might give you the cheapest um policy too, the cheapest coverage. Coverage. Um, yeah. You know, we have to be very careful of what, of what we pay for. I'll give you some examples. So um, the, during the wind government, uh, I believe 2010 to 2017, we saw 17 separate cuts to the accident benefit regime. That is benefit, you know, money that gets paid out for your, to help you with therapy and attendant care. That was continually cut. You could buy optional benefits to increase that at a very, very cheap price. Um, they they put in this deductible or increase the deductible to forty thousand dollars. That means if you get any money for pain and suffering, it gets reduced by forty thousand dollars, and a jury doesn't know. So you can buy some optional benefits to to mitigate the unfortunate cuts that have happened over over the years, and it doesn't cost a lot of, a lot of money to do so. So my advice would be definitely compare prices, but also compare the product that you're buying and ask about some optional benefits that would help you. Certainly, if you do have a catastrophic injury or a quadriplegic, you know, maybe you need to, just in case, purchase a little bit of, of extra benefits for that, which don't cost a lot of money. But yeah, absolutely shop around, write to the Minister of Finance, write to FISA, write to the MPPs. The only way these issues get sort of dealt with, um, uh, ultimately, are when they become, in fact, election issues. And that's unfortunate. Yeah, well, the election's far away, so I mean, we got to wait another t two years at the very least for anything to happen. Um, can we expect that the uh, premier is going to push back when he finds out that insurance premiums are going up again? You know what? I uh, one thing about Premier Ford, he's he's pretty hands on, and and you know, he puts himself out there as as answering personally calls and and being open to the public sentiment. So perhaps if anybody is going to do it, he will. But then again, you know, we're dealing with a big insurance bureaucracy, a big lobby uh, that they have. Uh, so it, it, it may not happen. I, you know, I, I don't, really don't know. Nana, I want to thank you for your time today. Thanks for being so